Intradetrus or Botox injection, how I do it. Onobotulinum toxin A or Botox has recently received FDA approval for use in patients with urgeonary incontinence from neurogenic detrusor overactivity. Off-label use in patients with urgeonary incontinence secondary to idiopathic detrusor overactivity has been widely reported to be safe and efficacious. We have achieved clinical improvement of symptoms in many patients with urgeonary incontinence from both IDO and NDO who are refractory to oral medications. Botulinum is a potent neurotoxin that irreversibly blocks the release of acetylcholine from presynaptic nerve terminals. Seven serotypes exist, A through G, which are all produced by different strains of Clostridium botulinum. Onobotulinum toxin A is commercially available as Botox from Allergan. Serotype A has been favored over serotype B for the treatment of urgeonary incontinence due to its longer lasting effects. This table shows other commercially available preparations of the botulinum toxin. Each available brand contains toxin that is isolated by a different process with a proprietary unit of measurement, and they are therefore not interchangeable. We have been using Botox to treat patients with urgeonary incontinence related to both neurogenic and idiopathic detrusor overactivity who are refractory to anticholinergic medications. Additionally, we have been using Botox in those patients who are simply unable to tolerate the unwanted side effects from these medicines. All patients treated with Botox must be willing to perform clean intermittent catheterization. Additionally, they should have a negative urine culture documented before the procedure. Patients who are receiving Botox injections for other indications may only receive a total of 360 units per three-month period. For patients with neurogenic detrusor overactivity, we initiate treatment with 200 units of Botox. If the desired effect is not obtained, we will increase to 300 units on subsequent treatments. For patients with idiopathic detrusor overactivity, we start at 100 units and will inject up to 200 units if unsuccessful. Patients interested in increasing their injection to 200 units are counseled about an increased risk of urinary retention that approaches up to 20% of patients requiring CIC at that dose. Repeat injections are not performed for three months after failed therapy. Botox will start to take effect after two weeks with continued improvement for up to six weeks following the injection, and the efficacy is limited to six to nine months. The equipment necessary to perform the procedure depends on whether you will be performing this in the office or the operating room. For the office, we use a standard flexible cystoscope with an Olympus injector needle. In the OR, we use a 20 French collagen cystoscope with a Cook Williams cystoscopic injection needle. For preprocedural antibiotics, patients typically receive a fluoroquinolone. It should be noted that aminoglycosides like gentamicin should not be used as preprocedural antibiotics as they can potentiate the systemic effects of the Botox. Illustrated here is a standard setup for patients receiving Botox in the operating room. Here is our 20 French collagen cystoscope, our Williams cystoscopic injection needle by Cook, 300 units of pre-prepared Botox and 10 cc syringes, and 1 cc syringe of saline used to clear the needle following injection. To reconstitute a 200 unit vial of Botox, 6 cc of normal saline is injected into the vial and mixed gently. 2 cc from the vial is then aspirated into each of 3 10 cc syringes. The reconstitution is completed by adding 8 cc of normal saline directly into each of the 10 cc syringes. This results in 3 syringes containing 67 units of Botox each. You are now watching video of a Botox injection procedure as filmed through the 30 degree lens in a 20 French collagen cystoscope. The trigone is identified and excluded from injection sites as is recommended in the package insert. The dome is also excluded. Each injection into the detrusor muscle is performed at a depth of 2 to 3 millimeters and spaced 1 centimeter apart. With each injection, 1 cc of reconstituted Botox solution is injected into the detrusor muscle for a total of 30 injection sites. In this video, you can note a technique we use to ensure proper injection into the detrusor muscle. Once the needle is advanced into the detrusor muscle, gentle retraction is placed on the needle, tenting the bladder wall into the scope. This small amount of resistance allows you to feel when the needle is in the detrusor muscle so that you know you're injecting in the correct location.
The following is an example of improper injection. As you can see, the two injections are spaced less than one centimeter apart and are therefore too close. Additionally, the needle is not placed into the detrusor muscle, but instead into the space between the bladder mucosa and the detrusor muscle. This raises a large wheel, which allows the Botox to escape through the puncture site from the needle. Compare that to this video demonstrating proper injection technique. The needle is advanced two to three millimeters into the detrusor muscle. It is gently retracted back, tenting up the detrusor muscle, showing good placement of the needle, and then is injected roughly one centimeter apart from the previous injection site. Patients treated in the office are monitored for 30 minutes and allowed to go home if stable. Patients treated in the operating room are monitored in the post-anesthesia care unit and then sent to the short procedure unit where they are discharged home per protocol by nursing. Follow-up after the procedure is typically two to three weeks for Botox naive patients. For more information on this procedure and the equipment needed to adopt Botox injection into your clinical practice, please see the associated article published in the Canadian Journal of Urology.